this communication lab where we have different robots and the idea there is to experiment and to see how we can apply robots in the classroom in different roles. So in this case, the Peppa robot, uh, we uh, introduced it to see how a robot can support group work. So uh, it is a course on learning design where students design, um, they actually design applications for the use of robots themselves. And they have different and they work in groups. It's a project based uh, coursework. So they work in small groups throughout the semester. And um, the idea or the question was, how can a robot support the teacher in the classroom with many students who work in small teams? And um, how can how a robot can orchestrate the an entire interactive session that has like a workshop project based character? So that was the, the reason. So the empathy mapping is um, is an interactive session that we do with students where students uh, try to understand uh, and empathize with a future user or a future learner for, for whom they design an e-learning or a learning design and e-learning application. And um, in empathy mapping, uh, we have different fields. So we are like trying to put ourselves into the shoes of our future learners or look through the through the eyes of future learners try to to imagine what do they see what do they think what do they say what do they feel so we, we go through different questions related to cognitive emotional affective and also cognitive related to um uh to actual behavior in everyday life to the, all these different aspects and this empathy mapping is like um um, a sequence of different questions that are asked to students um, and we do this in groups so students discuss this in group and then when they um, arrive at a conclusion they write down uh, their results in a um, template that we create in a Miro board mm -hmm. so um, this is where the the final outcome lands in this Miro board but before that there is a lot of discussion in the group and the role of the Pepper robot in this case is to um, orchestrate the entire class. So it basically, um, first of all, it gives a structure. So it uh, it tells about the session, introduces the session. It tells how it is structured, what will happen step by step. The students have to use the mirror board. First, they have to discuss in groups and then put the results, the final results into the uh, fields in the template in the mirror board. And... Um, then the peppers, the pepper robot asks each question and it um, asks a question and measures time. So there's also the timekeeping aspect. So let's say we have maybe two minutes per question. So students know they have to discuss very quickly and arrive at some uh, at some conclusion, at some um, uh, consensus in the end. And um, the robot can also move in the class, so it can go to different to different groups, to different tables where students are placed, and it shows the question and an example that it is giving on the tablet. So, for instance, if students want to revise the question or maybe see an example again, they can um, interact with the tablet. So it's providing, it's asking the questions, it's providing the examples, it's timekeeping, and it's also providing um, some sounds. So it always signals with a gong sound when a phase is starting and a phase is ending. So it can attract students' attention. Okay, now it's the start, now it's the end. So when they're, you know, like discussing at the table and it's very loud, there is this gong sound uh, that catches their attention and they know now it's the end, now it's the beginning of a new uh, of a new session. So in this way, uh, it's helping me as a teacher who teaches in this course uh, to orchestrate this uh, empathy se empathy mapping session on a more organizational level. And in this way, I win time. I have more time to go to each table, to each group, and actually discuss with students their questions. If they, you know, if they have some deeper level questions, maybe need some understanding or um, they have something to discuss that the robot cannot provide with its example, um, then I can, you know, as a teacher, jump in and and help on a more personalized, individualized level. 
and I don't have to worry about timekeeping. I don't have to worry about, I don't know, making some sounds or shouting. It's now it's the end. Let's move to the next session. It's all done by the robots. So it's safe. It also contributes to my way well-being as a teacher because I feel less, I, um, I um, don't lose as much energy as I would. So I don't feel as stressed at the end of the class. I'll actually, when the robot helps me in the class, I walk out of the class with high level of energy, I'm not as worn out as I would be with 30 students, you know, that need my attention and there's a lot of action going on. If we like kind of want a list of the different roles the robot can play, the robot be, can be an assistant to the teacher, like I described in the example of empathy mapping, it can help me as a teacher to structure the class. It can, uh, depending on how we program it, it can be an assistant to the learners or to the students, for example. So we have some scenarios where we place a smaller robot now on a table and it can assist the learners uh, in a more individual way. Um, it can be also used, so robots can be used as tutees. So we are now working on a scenario where a um, actually a student is supposed to teach something to the robot. So it's like learning by teaching, you know, you're teaching the robot to do something and through this process, you are learning yourself. So this tutee role is uh, very interesting. Uh, then robots, of course, can support collaborative learning. So if there is um, any work done in group, um, it can either moderate the group or be, like we said, be the uh, member of the team, providing some input or um, in a positive or negative way. And, um, and of course, if we think about um, the classroom itself or the university itself or school itself as a physical space, a robot can also uh, serve as a concierge maybe at the entrance so it can help students to find the place to the room or find some information give some information it can welcome the students it can you know use these different um, uh, information that maybe we as teachers are not capable of giving to 30 students at the same time and of course it can use also use as a kind of feedback machine so if um, students have some feedback like we know from airports for instance in the classroom you know we could collect feedback while going out or walking into the classroom or connect, maybe collect some information about how students feel on this day. So this, this is also an application, um, um, a little bit like beyond the, the learning process itself, but still like within, you know, the physical space of the, of the classroom. Honestly, I think most of the scenarios where uh, we apply robots, they have some kind of game-based element. So either it can be game-based on the feedback level, the way that robot gives feedback. It makes this, uh, for instance, the thumbs up uh, or thumbs down, depending on the replies of the students, you know, so it can be implemented anywhere. But in this uh, buzzer game scenario from the conference robots in education, robotics in education, uh, we described a, a scenario that is um, um, developed especially to recognize nonverbal sounds in the classroom. So this is a PhD project of my students. And the background here is that a lot of um, AI techniques are um, um, targeted towards verbal uh, speech recognition, speech generation, speech recognition. But there's still little on um, nonverbal sounds, which are also very important in education. So as a teacher, for instance, in the classroom, you sense the atmosphere uh, based not only on the verbal um, input of your students, but also uh, uh, based on the sounds that students make. If they're laughing, if they're clapping, if there's uh, this kind of sound, you already you know already what is going on, right? What is the, uh, the atmosphere? What is the, the mindset of the students on that day or how they feel? So this is the background and the um, the first step in this process is um, teaching a robot to recognize uh, simple mechanical sounds like the buzzer uh, sounds. So we bought, um, they're like buzzer game, you know, they're just like the buttons that you can press. And we designed a scenario where there are two groups of students at different tables and the pepper robot is a quiz master and it's um, you can just use different questions quiz questions basically for any content for instance you are teaching and uh, the students 
kind of compete in groups. So it's a group-based quiz. And the team that knows the answer first, one person has to press the buzzer and the robot recognizes uh, from which, uh, which buzzer was pressed first and then tells this group can now uh, say which answer is correct. And then um, a pepper robot collects the points and then has a kind of like a leaderboard and a representation at the end, which group won. So this is the the idea. And here the robot is trained. Um, we use uh, uh, CCN networks to train the robot to um, recognize the buzzer sounds. And the, like I said, this is just the first um, uh, the first step in this project. In the next one, we will try to teach the robot to recognize different types of clapping and uh, different types of um, sounds like effect that express emotions. So like ah, ah. <laughs> all these different sounds that can be recognized and from which the robot can infer if the person maybe needs help, is bored maybe needs some new input or is, um, needs to be reminded of something or um, yeah, or is just having fun, <laughs> which can also be great to know. Yeah, so this is the, uh, in a nutshell, this, this scenario that we presented in the paper. Mm -hmm.